Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. A love triangle that ends in murder. Why taking the stand in the courtroom is crucial for both sides of the case and what forensic scientists have to say. And growing concern over a busy street after a sixth grader was hit by a car this week. The school officials are saying now about it. And let's take it live. Look out at the Alamo City. 40 degrees, a chilly start to your Saturday. But could we see those temps rise? Check in with our Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Good morning. It is 6 o'clock this Saturday morning, February 15th. The day after Valentine's. Thanks for joining yeah. us. <laughs> Valentine's Day. Did you guys do anything special for Valentine's Day? You know what? We That's just it. stayed inside and made steaks. Big oh, awesome. yeah. Chateaubriand. Yeah, it was really nice. The newlywed celebrating accordingly. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful oh, new right. apartment, too. Thank you. Yeah, it was easy to make the steaks because we used, we just basically seared them and it was super easy. Nice. Sounds awesome. good. We also celebrated with food. We made pizzas. <laughs> nice. <Yeah. Awesome. laughs> so that was good. And oh, somebody, somebody made the dough for me, one of my friends. And then nice. I, you know, I, I did the rest. Max, what'd you guys do? Oh, <laughs> uh, we went out to a nice dinner. It was good. I think it was almost too fancy for me. Because really? like, well, so I love duck. My dad and I made duck growing up. Yeah. And so I got duck and like, I'm used to it being crispy and like a little fried. And I don't, I think this place was like too classy to fry it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> just like, mm, well, we won't really say good. the restaurant's name. No, because, no. Yeah. But, but you weren't hungry afterwards. Was not hungry okay, after. Well. Anyway, it was good. Side note, the other day I was sitting outside I think I got a sunburn. Uh, oh no, uh, yeah. really? <laughs> but it's just a test with how beautiful it was well, outside. Yeah, yes. we totally saw clear skies the last couple of days, but today clouds are actually gonna return and we're gonna have quite the warm up into early next week before another big season change. So lots to talk about in the forecast, including a strong cold front, and I'll talk about that forecast in a bit. All right, we look forward to that. Yeah. Thank you, Sarah. Of course. Thank you, Sarah. Well, this morning we are waiting to learn more about what's gonna happen to those Americans who are aboard the Diamond Princess cruise ship. Now, they've actually been quarantined in Japan. And there's a possibility the U.S. government could get involved to evacuate the passengers from what the CDC says is the biggest outbreak site of the coronavirus outside China. Alicia Barrera is live this morning from Lackland with the latest. Good morning. Well, we know aboard that cruise ship there are 380 U.S. citizens and their families. Again, they're docked in Yokohama, Japan, and they've been placed that cruise ship in a two week quarantine, and that was established on February 5th. And since then, well, those coronavirus cases that have been confirmed have only been increasing. And right now, in total, there's 218. It's not clear of those 218 how many of those are American citizens. And this morning, we're waiting to hear directly from Lackland Air Force Base. We're wanting to know if and when the U.S. citizens on that ship would arrive here in San Antonio. Several news outlets, including ABC, The New York Times, and The Wall Street Journal, have confirmed via a U.S. official that the, the evacuation of some Americans is happening just this weekend. The Wall Street Journal says there may be two flights, but not all evacuees are expected to arrive to one military base. Another site that, they, that may receive the evacuees could be Travis Air Force Base near Sacramento, California. And our team here at KSAT has been working around the clock to try to get more information from Lackland officials as well as our local officials to see, again, if these U.S. citizens aboard that cruise ship in Japan would be making their way here to San Antonio. And if that's the case, where would they receive medical treatment? And, of course, we're standing by to, to get that information and bring it to you. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you, Alicia. And for those who are not trained in the sciences, taking the stand could be tough. But for both sides of the William Perkins trial, it is crucial. Our Paul Venema takes us into the courtroom as a forensic scientist take the stand in a love triangle murder. Six gunshots ended an early morning argument outside this East Side Strip Center almost three years ago. 34-year-old Jonathan Ashford was killed. 41-year-old William Perkins arrested at the scene and booked for murder. He admitted firing the shots. Testimony from a forensic scientist during Perkins' murder trial validated that. Perkins may have discharged a firearm, handily discharged a firearm, or was in close proximity to a discharged firearm. That conclusion based on gunshot residue found in his hands. Tests on the hands of Ashford showed no residue. 
The conclusions are it's indeterminate if Jonathan Ashford discharged a firearm, handled a discharged firearm, or was in close proximity to a discharged firearm. Though Perkins' lawyer claims that this is a case of self-defense, prosecutors say the lack of forensic evidence suggests this was murder, not self-defense. Uh, murder, they say, the result of a lover's triangle. According to earlier testimony, Ashford's wife Stacy and Perkins were involved in an intimate affair. His lawyer, while admitting the affair, said it was over and the couple was only phone friends at the time of the shooting. We expect prosecutors to rest their case early next week. Then it'll be up to the defense to begin calling witnesses to support their self-defense claim. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Paul Venema. A busy street, Hackberry, near Commerce, is causing big concerns this week after a sixth grader from the Idea Carver Academy was recently hit by a car. Now, the student wasn't seriously injured, but this situation has school staff and parents now worried. After the sixth grader was hit, the principal of the academy asked parents to pick up and drop off their students in front of the school at Robinson Place. School officials say they plan to meet with the city of San Antonio to possibly discuss changes along Hackberry Street. Police officers also plan to monitor the area, ensure that everyone there follows follows the rules of the road. In your morning headlines, police in the state of Maine say one person is in custody after he shot someone outside of a Walmart. Now, after shots were fired, the store went on lockdown, trapping customers inside. According to witnesses, the gunman walked up to a shopper as he was putting his groceries away and shot at him three times. Officers say they caught the shooter and arrested him. The victim remains in critical condition this morning. And in politics this morning, President Donald Trump's $1.5 billion proposal to prop up the country's nuclear fuel industry has caused at least one company to take steps towards boosting uranium mines. The company, Canada-based Energy Fuels Inc., has announced a stock sale and says it's going to use those proceeds for its mining operations. Energy Fuels confirms that they may include moving to start operations at a controversial new uranium mine near Grand Canyon National Park. Now, conservation groups and Democratic lawmakers fear that mining there near that national park could contaminate the water resources. And time now is 6.07, 40 degrees out. And a one-day symposium helping cancer patients in San Antonio, what organizers have planned later this morning. All right, let's take a live look out at the Alamo City this morning. Like we've been saying, 40 degrees to start your Saturday. Kind of cold for now. It's, it's very cold <laughs> for now. If you are out and about, grab that jacket. We're going to check in with Sarah with a full forecast in just a few minutes. Good morning and welcome back. A one day workshop is set for later this morning and it's meant for those affected by cancer and it's hosted by the Texas Oncology Foundation. And they will be teaching people how to better manage their situations and learn valuable survivor skills. Now the one day symposium will feature classes and workshops that focus on wellness issues and encourage dialogue around cancer survivorship. Now if you'd like to head out there today, take a look at your screen right now. It will be held at the Omni Hotel, the Colonnade. That's today from 7.30 in the morning until 3.30 this afternoon. And the American Cancer Society estimates that about 129,770 Texans will receive a cancer diagnosis in 2020. So with advances in screening standards for early detection and breakthrough medical treatments emerging through research, more patients are winning the fight every year. Mm -hmm. Which and is good news. it's great news. I actually just did a story with the Mays Cancer Center and they have this crazy new device and you actually have to take a deep breath in and it can target specific cancers without injuring other necessary organs. Oh yeah, That's amazing. like when you're, when you're having radiation, mm -hmm. when your lungs inflate, it protects your heart from that radiation. That makes sense, Max. Yeah, yeah very Pretty detailed. Crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and you know what? Today we are starting off on the cold side. It's definitely chilly with temperatures in the 30s and in the 40s right now. And as we take a look out at downtown San Antonio, Pretty much a, a beautiful, serene morning out there this Saturday morning. It is 40 degrees, and dew points are actually close to the temperature. We've got a dew point right now right in the upper 30s, and so because temperatures are close to the dew point, I wouldn't be surprised if in some places there was some very patchy light fog in, in some areas, uh, especially outside of San Antonio City Center. So we're talking areas like Pleasanton, New Braunfels, 
even out toward Bulverde at Bernie stage as well. We could see some areas of light fog this morning, but nothing uh, dense out there. Uh, it's 33 in Holotus, so close to freezing in Holotus. 34 at Bernie stage, 36 in New Braunfels, 38 in Pleasanton, 36 in Hondo. Definitely a chilly morning, especially as we zoom out. All of us chilly around the KSAT 12 viewing area, with the exception being Del Rio, Laredo, where temperatures are in the 50s. Other than that, it's pretty cold this morning. Uh, and dew points are starting to rise. Now, right now outside, it's nice and dry with dew points in the 30s, but just in the last 24 for hours or so dew points have risen by about 10 degrees and this is a trend moisture is really going to return as we head into tomorrow and the start of the week so you'll notice today an increase in cloud cover gradually so that by the afternoon it should be mostly cloudy now in spite of that we're still going to warm up pretty nicely and we should be able to see a temperature close to 65 which is seasonable this time of year south wind at 5 to 10 miles per hour all in all, a beautiful day other than the added clouds in the picture. 55 around lunch and in the evening, our temperatures will struggle to cool down that much, but it'll still be pretty chilly. So if you have any late Saturday evening plans, make sure to take that jacket with you. Now in the week ahead, we're going to have some pretty wacky temperatures. Like I said, moisture is returning. And so by tomorrow and Monday, we'll be actually near 80 degrees. So it's going to be a warm start to the week. But look at the horizon. We've got another strong cold front on the way. That strong cold front will be arriving uh, on Tuesday at some point, and that'll send our temperatures tumbling into the 40s, not only later on Tuesday in the evening, but all day on Wednesday, all day on Thursday. Our temperatures will stay in the 40s, so it is going to get chilly pretty quickly after a warm start. Again, look at this. Tomorrow we'll be at 75 degrees after some morning fog, 78 on Monday, President's Day. That front moves through through at some point on Tuesday and it drops temperatures from near 70 degrees into the 40s. On top of that drizzle and light rain throughout the day on Wednesday and throughout the day on Thursday. So it's going to be damp and dreary. Temperature should stay above freezing, which of course is good news because we don't want to deal with any of that wintry kind of precipitation. But still, it's going to be a pretty interesting week ahead. Uh, de uh, definitely it still is winter and we usually get these uh, stronger cold fronts around this time of year, around rodeo time as well. Very interesting week. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Close to 80 on Monday and then staying in the 40s all day on Wednesday and Thursday. All right, keeping it interesting. Thank yeah. you, Sarah. <laughs> Thanks, Sarah. 615, 40 degrees out. And knowing the challenges and positive points of creating jobs in Military City, USA, still ahead on GMSA, how the aerospace industry is poised to grow. And possibly go to the moon. That would be very cool. Ooh. Plus, hoverboards on fire. A warning about the plague product and what you should do if you have one. Up next, the warnings and the recalls you need to know this month. Oh my goodness, that's not cool. That looks terrifying. <laughs> that's scary. And your winning lotto numbers. Pick three, we have 208, Fireball 1. Daily 4, we have 8591, Fireball 9. And Cash 5 is 2468, 20. And Mega Millions 10, 32, 48, 54, 55. Big one is 18. Megaplier is five. We'll be right back. And welcome back. It is 619. So if you are into smoothies, there is a new reason to check your freezer. Some smoothie kits have been recalled because of worries. They may make you sick. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moore shows us which ones to look out for and why the government is now warning about another hoverboard recall. Videos like this, hoverboards on fire, have plagued the product. Now another warning. The CPSC says don't charge or use this one. The new high-tech X15 because the lithium-ion batteries can overheat and ignite. Even though the scooters have the UL mark, the government says they're not UL listed. So far, the Houston manufacturer has refused a recall. Check your freezer. Blendtopia is recalling 29,000 cases of its 7-ounce frozen smoothie kits because they may be contaminated with listeria. These are superfood smoothie kits labeled as Glow, Detox, Energy, Immunity, or Strength Blends. Best Buy dates are July, October, and November of 2021. Whole Foods is among the stores that sold those smoothies. You can take them back to the store or just throw them out. 
70,000 ceiling fans sold at Lowe's are recalled after hundreds of reports of fan blades breaking or ejecting from the fan. People have been hit in the face. This is the Harbor Breeze 48-inch Santa Ana model sold from 2014 through 2016. Don't use the fan. Contact the manufacturer. And you're out. Rawlings is recalling this catcher's helmet because it fails to protect from a head injury. Inside the helmet, there's a sticker that reads CH Mock SR Rev A. They were sold at sporting goods stores and online. Contact Rawlings. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Gotta be watch out for those hoverboards. <laughs> I was never a fan. No. I'm, I was in on the scooters for a minute, but no. the hoverboards, uh, you know, the whole explosion thing kind of freaked me out. Yeah, 621. <laughs> 40 degrees out. And committing to go to the moon, Mars, and beyond. Up next, a look at what you can expect in this week's leading SA. Infinity and beyond. <laughs> Literally. Aw, uh, happy let's... birthday, Annalisa. Annalisa, seven years old. Happy birthday. Love the pics. All right, next up, Carter, eight years old. Happy birthday. Remember to keep posting your birthday pictures to ksat.com slash birthdays. Include a name and an age. We show them every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday right here on GMSA. But if you go and you build a habit up on the moon, and those basaltic rocks are because that's what the moon's made out of. Those plants, well, they're going to be grown in the greenhouse on the moon. The robots that we're developing on this campus, I should say the people on this campus are developing, are the types of robots that can go up and build those habitations. So that was Jim Pershbach, the CEO and president of Port San Antonio. I spoke with him earlier this week on the challenges and the points of positivity of creating jobs right here in Military City, USA. He even talks about how the aerospace industry is poised to grow with the commitment to go to the moon, Mars, and beyond. To hear that full conversation, you can just tune in GMSA this Sunday, and it'll be about 8 in the morning, so that is tomorrow. Very cool. It was so cool, and it was actually just so much more than anticipated. You know, we, we did a whole series of stories when we were out there because there's so much going on. Shout out to the Technology Museum because we were there for probably way too long, and I kept getting distracted because there was so much cool stuff. They showed the whole evolution of technology. They have these huge, I don't even know, like huge like rack storage, and it kind of shows that technology, and the phone is actually billions of times faster than like these huge buildings. Oh yeah. It's yeah. It's pretty weird to think about it now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, cool. Look forward to it. Yes. Yep. Tomorrow, 8 a.m. All right. 626, 40 degrees out. Still cold. Yes. Yeah, very cold. <laughs> For now though, finding out your closest polling site, coming up what you need to know about early voting next week. Plus, Boeing's 737 MAX is grounded once again when airline companies are expecting to be up and flying later this year. And retracing a coronavirus victim's steps, what Hawaiian officials have to say about their recent findings. Good morning and happy Saturday, 6.30, February 15th. We are sprinting through February. I know, Valentine's already gone. Well, actually, some people, you know, celebrate all weekend long. So yeah. Valentine's yeah. weekend, yeah. but it's a cold start to this Valentine's weekend. Yes. Sarah, are we expecting a rise in the temperatures today? Yeah, we will be able to see temperatures rise, but right now it is chilly outside. Temperatures are really in the 30s and near 40 degrees. It's 40 degrees at San Antonio National Airport, but 35 at JBSA Randolph, 34 at Bernie Sage Airfield, 38 in Kerrville, and 36 in New Braunfels. Today, though, temperatures should rise pretty nicely into the mid-60s, but clouds will actually be increasing. We've had a couple of days here of clear blue skies. Clouds today uh, will definitely be noticeable. South winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour and tomorrow even warmer than today. And as we head into the week, wacky temperatures. I've got to look ahead to that crazy temperature roller coaster in just a few minutes. Max, Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. The number of confirmed coronavirus cases continues to rise on the Diamond Princess cruise ship in Japan. Now, more than 200 cases have been confirmed. This morning, we are waiting to learn more about what will happen to the American citizens aboard the cruise ship. There's a possibility the U.S. government could get involved. Lisa Herrera joining us live from Lackland with the latest. 
Good morning. Well, several news outlets, including ABC, The New York Times, Wall Street Journal, among others, have confirmed via a U.S. official that some of these evacuees could be headed to the United States, specifically here at Lackland Air Force Base. But of course, this morning, we're still waiting to learn exactly directly from Lackland Air Force Base, as well as local leaders and other local agencies, including Methodist Texan, Metro Health, among others, to know if this is actually happening here in San Antonio. We know there are about 380 U.S. citizens and their families on that ship docked in Yokohama, Japan. That cruise ship was put under a two-week quarantine on February 5th, and in that short time, the number of confirmed coronavirus cases has gone up to more than 200. We know that not all evacuees are expected to arrive to one military base. Another site that may receive the evacuate, evacuees could be Travis Air Force Base near Sacramento, California. And again, our team here at KSAT has been working around the clock. We have, have sent a request for statement for both Lackland Air Force Base and again, local leaders, local agencies to try to figure out more information, to try to confirm that information for you. And if these evacuees from Japan aboard that cruise ship do head to the United States, will it be here to San Antonio and exactly where will they be treated? Reporting live from Lackland Air Force Base, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. Also news with the coronavirus, Hawaiian state health officials say a man with the coronavirus was vacationing on Oahu and he stayed at a timeshare. Since then, the hotel that he stayed at has been notified of that issue, tried to identify any possible close contacts that the man had while he was there. During his time on the island, he developed cold-like symptoms. Then when he returned home to Japan, he had a fever of 102 and tested positive for the coronavirus that happened just yesterday. Now, Hawaiian health officials now sending out medical advisories to all the health care providers in the state. Make sure that they're on alert for the possibility of more cases. All of this happening while state officials try to retrace that man's steps. They admit they don't know how much to look into. And back here at home, Mission Trail Baptist Hospital also reminding patients that San Antonio hospitals are safe. Hospital officials are telling patients to let staff know if they have traveled or had close contact with someone who has visited Wuhan, China, where the coronavirus originated. Now, if patients have symptoms related to the coronavirus, they are given face masks and are placed in a separate room. They will be gently, carefully cared for in a, in a negative pressure room where uh, it's a room that sort of like um, prevents disease spread through the airborne uh, means. Now, ER Dr. Adan Khan reassures patients that the hospital is safe. Khan says they haven't quarantined anybody yet, but they are ready for anything that comes their way. And back here at home, a reminder that early voting for the March 3rd primary begins just next week. There are more than 30 early voting locations across San Antonio. Now, the elections administrator says that with this year's political climate, turnout could be higher than the 2016 primary election. She wants to remind the young voters and first time voters, even seasoned voters, put your phones away while you go and vote. The Texas election code has not grown with technology. That, that it's just that simple. Um, they'll see signs that say no cell phones, no cameras. Uh, it, and it's, I think it'll get there. It has to get there. And we're telling you this right now because early begins this Tuesday, February 18th. We have actually a sample ballot for both races along with a list of early voting locations and everything else you need to know right now on our website, ksat.com and slash vote 2020. And the Me Too movement continues along with the Harvey Weinstein trial this week after prosecutors completed their closing arguments. They said he considered himself such a big shot in Hollywood that he thought he could get away with treating aspiring actresses like complete disposables. Now, the prosecutors were looking to focus the jury's attention back on the accusers who testified in their harrowing accounts alle alleging rapes, forced sex, and groping, just to name a few. Defense contends that two women he is charged with attacking were opportunists who willingly latched on to Weinstein because they thought it would help their careers. Also in your morning headlines, a jury has convicted a former Michigan State University gymnastics coach all tied to the Larry Nasser case. Kathy Cleggs was found guilty on a felony and misdemeanor while she lied to police, denying that two teen athletes told her of sexual abuse by Larry Nasser back in 1997. Now, to put that in perspective, that's nearly 20 years before he was even charged. 
Clegg's faces up to four years in prison. She is the second person to be found guilty of charges related to Nasser's sexual abuse case. And Michael Avenatti, the lawyer who represented Stormy Daniels in the lawsuits against President Donald Trump, has been convicted of trying to extort Nike. Prosecutors claim Avenatti made threats to use his media access to hurt Nike's reputation. Aleph, the sportswear giant, paid him $25 million. Avenatti's lawyers said he was following the wishes of an amateur youth basketball league director who wanted him to force Nike to fix its culture. Avenatti did not testify. Sentencing was scheduled for June. Southwest, United, and American Airlines announced the grounding of their Boeing 737 MAX aircrafts at least until the second half of this year. Southwest Airlines says that it will postpone the return of the Boeing 737 MAX planes to August 10th. American Airlines won't use the planes until August 18th, and United extending the use of the 737 MAX planes until at least September 4th. Remember, the grounding of this aircraft around the world came after two deadly crashes between 2018 and 2019. They both involved the 737 MAX, and in the end, 346 people died. Well, time now, 637, 40 degrees out. And putting in the work while making a difference along the way. Still ahead on GMSA, how students at one local school are reaching for infinity and beyond. And making your next trip to the airport all that much easier. Up next, the new service you can take advantage of and what it's going to cost you. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning. Boy, it's cold out there, 40 degrees. Sarah says 30 in some areas in the 30s. So we're going to check in with her to see what we can expect for the rest of your weekend. And welcome back. It is 641. So your struggles of finding parking at the airport might be over thanks to a new option at the San Antonio International Airport. They celebrated the Flyaway Valet, which is a new 24-hour curbside valet. To use it, though, travelers drive their car to Terminal A or Terminal B, give their information to the valet attendant, go inside the airport, or airport officials say they hope this will help out travelers. If you're coming into San Antonio International Airport and you're in a hurry and you're worried about finding a parking spot, we do have parking spots available, but now we provide this amenity of flyaway valet that gets you in and out quickly into our airports. And right now, the price is $25 per day. Active duty and reserve military personnel will get a 10% discount. All right. That comes take. in handy, though. It I guess comes in handy. If you're really rushing. But here's the thing. Uh -huh. $25 a day, even with that... <laughs> An Uber anywhere around the city yeah. is $20 max. Hey, they're going to hear you. They're going to be mad. <laughs> I'm trying to help the viewers save some money No, here. it's true. It's true. Or if you can, if you're lucky enough to have a friend or a family member drive you, that's always nice. Yeah. But again, if you're in a rush, mm -hmm. yes, be an option. That is a good option. For sure. Okay, let's take a look outside with live cam over the city of San Antonio right now. Looking pretty nice, but on the horizon there, a little bit of haze. And in fact, we do have some areas where we're dealing with some very light fog as temperatures get close to uh, the dew points. Patchy fog out in New Braunfels right now where visibility is down to a mile, down to five miles in Pleasanton, down to three at Bernie Stage Airfield, even down to four in southern Bear County around Stenson. So keep in mind that there could be some patchy fog clouds are actually increasing around the Alamo City and around the KSAT 12 viewing area. Take a look out toward Del Rio. Completely cloudy out toward Del Rio at the moment. And closer to home in San Antonio, uh, we're looking at a Clouds really starting to increase on the south side of the county uh, here. We'll go ahead and go home uh, and you can see that on the south side of the county uh, again looking at those increasing clouds right there. So we are going to be seeing clouds increase around Bear County and that means that uh, we're going to see a little bit more moisture in place starting to transition to the potential for mugginess early next week. But today should still be a pretty nice day. Again, it's chilly. It's 39 in Kerrville, 36 in New Braunfels. 40 at San Antonio International Airport, 39 in Pleasanton. Very cold across parts of New England. Take a look at these temperatures. New York at 15 degrees and 19 below up in Caribou, Maine. Today on the high rise future cast, you'll notice that those clouds are really going to start to increase so that by the afternoon we'll have mostly cloudy skies. In spite of that, still able to warm up by nearly 25 degrees today. We should see a high temperature around 65 in San Antonio, closer to 75 along 35 south toward 
Cachula and Laredo. Again, we'll be at about 58 degrees right around noon, 65 in the afternoon with mostly cloudy skies, south winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour. It'll be a pretty nice day, but then we really warm up. Take a look at Sunday tomorrow, 75, Monday, 78 degrees. A front will move through on Tuesday, dropping our temperatures into the 40s on Wednesday and on Thursday. And on top of that, we'll have a chance for some drizzle and some light rain throughout Wednesday and Thursday. So we're going to go through a quite the temperature swings from near 80 into the 40s all day on Wednesday and Thursday because of that front. Rainfall potential doesn't look great. Maybe about a quarter of an inch of rain around San Antonio. Really the main area of rain should be from Fredericksburg to Austin up to Waco uh, where they could see up to about an inch and a half of rainfall. But again, our weather is going to be quite interesting over the next few days. Increasing clouds today, 75 tomorrow, so it's going to be a warm one. Mugginess returns on Monday. We'll be near 80 degrees, maybe even have a little bit of a heat index on that day. Then that front will move through right around midday on Tuesday. That'll drop our temperatures from near 70 degrees into the 40s. It'll become windy and breezy. We'll stay in the 40s all day on Wednesday and Thursday. It'll be damp uh, with a drizzle and light rain. Then we'll clear out on Friday but still it's going to feel like winter for another few days there. Uh, just like this past week, it was pretty chilly during a couple of those days yes. and we stayed in the 40s for most of the day. We'll stay in the 40s for most of the day, Wednesday and wow. Thursday. Well, I will enjoy Monday. Yeah, Monday's <laughs> going to be nice and warm for President's Day. Some kiddos off from school. That's true. Thank you, Sarah. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Sarah. 646, 40 degrees up. Getting warmer though. Yes for today. <laughs> and a year-long project where the sky is the limit, literally, just ahead how one group of students at Kruger, Element, no, Kruger Middle School is getting creative in the STEM field. These are the littlest, tiniest babies we have ever had on the show. You are going <laughs> to meet them coming up on Good Morning San Antonio. Well, Beth is here from the Animal Defense League and has brought the <laughs> tiniest little itty bitties with her that we have ever seen. Who are these two? <laughs> this is Chipotle and Wendy. They are uh, just over a week old and they are a perfect example of bottle, bottle baby foster babies. Um, this is the kinds of babies that we are going to get lots and lots of in the springtime. Um, and they are a lot of work. They need to be fed very, very often and require a lot of care, but they are super cute and it is a, a great way to help us. Now, obviously you can't adopt these yet, but you can take them home and that's what that's what you're looking for because I know last year was a very, very busy year for all the shelters around. Never really got a break and now spring is right around the corner. Yeah, for sure. So our foster department has a lot of space for these babies right now um, because we're just kind of bracing for impact, waiting for them to come. And uh, we hope every year that we get more moms and babies together than we do babies without their moms. Obviously, mom is the best one to take care of them. Um, but if we don't have mom, we have lots of dedicated fosters, um, and you can be one of them, and they help us take care of them. If you were to take these home, you can. I know you can take them for any amount of time that you can help out, but what's the average that somebody keeps them? Um, it really just depends on the animal and the needs of the animal. It also depends on their age mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, uh, your availability as well and how much uh, time you can dedicate to them. But these babies are going to need foster for a little while. Like I said, they're just over a week old, so they've they've got a long journey ahead of them. Beth even has. <laughs> The, the portable little nursery with her with <laughs> heating pad and everything and she plugged in here at the uh, at the studio yeah. if you can help out uh, again they're cute as can be head on over to 11300 Nacogdoches or the Paul Jolly Center across from the zoo and look at these little ones just rooting around there looking for looking for a meal 655-1481 is the number to call thank you dear And it might sound like a lot of fun, building rockets. But building rockets and constructing them to reach a certain altitude in a certain amount of time, all while competing with other students across the country, well, it takes a lot of hard work. And students at the Kruger School of Applied Technologies are putting in that work, working as a team, and they're also making a difference along the way. 
Sure. We picked a plastic nose cone for durability in case it crashes into the ground. When building rockets, you need to think of everything, and that's what these students with the Kruger School of Applied Technologies are doing. So when we're building this rocket in the computer program, we have all of these constraints in mind, so we're actually simulating what a real-world environment is where they're building in constraints. We have to build to these constraints in order to be allowed to compete in the competition. This Principles of Applied Engineering class is all about project-based learning, and they also have an extra advanced engineering project that lasts for the entire school year. That's a very large rocket you see on the table. So they flew the smaller rocket before um, to collect data on, and now they're using that data to make the bigger one and to make predictions. And all their projects are built online first before they are built for real. This uses CO2 as a power source. We use a CAD program to design it, but before that we have to research about cars in general. The students work as a team. That means everything from sawing to building to using physics. For these are eighth graders and they're doing some high level kinetic energy calculations and thrust to weight ratios and trying to crunch data from our practice flight so that they can actually make predictions for the full scale flight that'll be more powerful and it's a safety issue. So they make sure our numbers are good. The students are also involved in community outreach to promote STEM careers, so they are making presentations to students their own age and younger. During those, we've had to teach, and you learn a lot about how to speak to other people. I really see my skills improving on presentation. Like, when I was a sixth grader, I had no way to talk to anybody. I was like, no, I would not like to stand up and talk, but now I'd happily do it. And I'm seeing all of these benefits that will help me in the work field when I go to apply to jobs, all of the stuff I've learned in eighth grade that's going to do so much. Such an amazing story. The students are now competing in the American Rocketry Challenge. And the team's three official qualification flight scores need to be submitted by April, which is coming up. And shortly after that, they will find out if they make it to the finals. So uh, the last, uh, out of the 12 years, uh, nine times they've gone to the finals. Wow. So I'm pretty confident they'll make it again. So good job, guys. Well, that kid was like, I want this for future jobs. And I immediately was like, NASA. Boom. Yes, yes. And eighth grade, already thinking about future jobs. Very impressed with the whole class. Absolutely. Great story. Thank you. <laughs> Time now, 654, 40 degrees out. We'll be right back. This morning, we're waiting to learn more on what will happen to the American citizens aboard the Diamond Princess cruise ship docked in Japan. As of now, we know there are 380 U.S. citizens and their families on the ship docked in Yokohama, Japan. That cruise ship was put under a two-week quarantine on February 5th, and in that short time, the number of confirmed coronavirus cases has gone up to 208. Team. This morning, the news we're waiting to hear directly from Lackland Air Force Base is if and when the U.S. citizens on that ship would arrive here in San Antonio. Several news outlets, including ABC, The New York Times, and The Wall Street Journal, have confirmed via U.S. official that the evacuation of some Americans is happening this weekend. The Wall Street Journal says there may be two flights, but not all evacuees are expected to arrive to one military base. Another site that may receive the evacuees could be trapped. Travis Air Force Base near Sacramento, California. And our team here at KSAT has been working around the clock to receive more information from Lackland Air Force Base officials as well as our local officials here in San Antonio. If this could happen here in San Antonio, will San Antonio receive this group of coronavirus patients? And if so, where exactly will they be treated? Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. It's chilly this morning. Uh, temperatures are in the 30s, hovering near 40 degrees around San Antonio, though. And today we'll see increasing clouds. It'll be cool for the first part of the day, mild in the afternoon, 65 for the high. South winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Tonight, moisture starts to return. It'll be a bit muggy tomorrow and for Monday as temperatures climb up to the 70s, close to 80 degrees on Monday. Strong front arrives on Tuesday. That'll send our temperatures down into the 40s for generally the rest of the week with areas of drizzle and light rain. It's going to be cold. It is. Thank you, Sarah. All right, thank you, Sarah. We are about to take an hour-long break for Good Morning America, but don't worry, we are back here at 8 a.m. and we have a lot to talk about. Sit down with the CEO of Port San Antonio. We talk about everything and the lofty goals that are out of this world. Also, we're going to check in with Alicia for Baby Day at the Central Library. And some kids in Marion did a wrap about the weather. So come back at 8. We've got a lot to talk about. Bye, guys.
from KSAT 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. The United States preparing to evacuate Americans stranded on the Diamond Princess cruise ship, all due to the coronavirus. The details of what is expected for those passengers and the officials still in Japan. And R&B singer R. Kelly facing new charges. What those charges are and the latest on his trial. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, the sun is out. It is four degrees hotter right now than it was when we started earlier this morning. So that's a point of optimism. The sun's kind of out. I don't know if I'd say hot. Not hotter. yet. Not yet. Hotter. A little bit little warmer. Bit. Anyway, good morning. <laughs> it is February 15th. Thank you so much for starting your day with us. Yes, thanks for being with us this morning. But uh, we hear it might warm up a little bit more, but not hot. Sarah, no. you got some good news? <laughs> chilly. It's chilly outside right now. We've got temperatures in the 40s, and those clouds have really returned. A few peaks of sunshine uh, out there, especially on the horizon, but still pretty cloudy as we start off the day. 44 degrees. Visibility is actually down a little bit to 8 miles, and that's because the temperature and the dew points are pretty close. And so, again, there are some areas of patchy fog, especially outside of the city center of San Antonio near New Braunfels. There's a little bit of patchy fog as well. But you can see that these clouds have really returned and uh, we'll see those clouds pretty much stick around through most of the day. Mostly sunny skies and uh, mostly cloudy skies rather into the afternoon. It's chilly out there this morning. It's 38 in Bulverde, 40 at JBSA Randolph, 35 in Comfort, 40 in Bandera. In fact, Stephanie and I went on a coffee run early this morning and we were bundled up. It is chilly out there, but we will warm up because of some sunshine through those clouds. Uh, we'll be in the 50s for most of the morning so it will be cool and chilly for the morning, but into the afternoon, mild 65 degrees south wind at 5 to 10 miles per hour, even warmer tomorrow. So we'll talk about that in the forecast. But first, pollen count came in this morning. Ash is the main culprit in the pollen count. It's moderate at 130. Mold is low at 80. Guess what I don't see? Mountain cedar. Mountain cedar season usually comes to an end right around now. So hopefully we'll continue that trend of no mountain cedar in the pollen counts in the future. But again, I'll talk about the warm up ahead and our next cold front coming soon. Max, Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. In the latest local news, police are asking for your help finding a person of interest possibly involved in a shooting. So take a look at your screen. Shots were fired back on last Saturday, February 8th at 410 and Nacogdoches Road. If you have any information involving the person that you see right now, please contact the San Antonio Police Department's Homicide Office. The number you can call if you do have that info on your screen right now, that is 210 207-7635. The U.S. is preparing to evacuate Americans from the Diamond Princess cruise ship. In an email to Americans on board, the U.S. Embassy in Tokyo wrote that a voluntary evacuation was taking place tomorrow. The embassy wrote that people who choose to return will still have to undergo 14 days of quarantine in the U.S. But anyone who has tested positive for coronavirus or is showing symptoms will have to continue receiving treatment in Japan. More than 200 people on the ship have been diagnosed with that virus. R&B singer R. Kelly now facing more charges. He's already dealing with a sexual abuse criminal case, but now federal prosecutors adding a superseding case against him in the state of Illinois. The new charges allege that co-defendants Darrell McDavid and Milton Brown helped the singer conceal video evidence showing sexual acts with minors. It also says that Kelly and McDavid agreed to intimidate and pay victims to keep them quiet. The next trial date set for April 27th. R. Kelly also facing federal charges in New York. A five-year-old boy in Georgia is being called a hero for his actions during a house fire after helping seven people escape from the burning home. Now, after waking up to find his bedroom in flames, six-year-old Noah woke up his sister and both escaped through a nearby window. Once his sister and dogs were safe, he quickly alerted the rest of his family who were able to get out safely as well. Now, yesterday, Bartow County Fire Rescue proclaimed Valentine's Day as Noah Woods Day. The fire chief there says it was an escape they would have never gotten to without Noah. Now to some news that is out of this world. NASA has picked four new mission proposals to study our solar system. One of the targets, Venus. The Da Vinci Plus proposal aims to analyze Venus's atmosphere for clues as to how it formed and how it evolved and whether it ever had an ocean. The Veritas proposal is mapping Venus's surface and figuring out why it developed so differently than the Earth. Now the four mission concepts will go under development within NASA's discovery program. Final selections are set to be made next year. 
And coming back here at home, if you love babies, today is your day. All across Texas, local organizations teaming together to celebrate the second annual Baby Day. How cute. The San Antonio Public Library hosting today's big event in partnership with the organization's first three years to help babies have fun and bond with other little ones. Our Alicia Beretta is live at the Central Library. Good morning. Good morning. You guys, usually at a library, we're told we have to be really, really quiet. But guess what? Not today because it's baby day and silence is definitely going to be replaced by some giggles, maybe some crying, but a lot of good times with the babies and their parents. And just some of the things right now that we want to show you that are going to be happening later today are rooms that the babies can explore. The study room has been turned into a high contrast room, so there's books inside different textures, different things that the babies can explore. And this day is really designed for infants and toddlers and their caregivers. There's just going to be more than 30 interactive activities to engage their senses. They're going to also have many classes for adults and their children together, such as baby yoga. I hear there's going to be a baby DJ later on today. Um, some activities are geared to specific age, age groups, like the high contrast room. It's for newborns to five month old children. And next door, there will will also be a color fiesta room. That one's bright and cheerful space for the babies to enjoy. Baby Day is a really unique opportunity for infants, toddlers, and their caregivers to really spend time engaging with each other at the child's pace and on their level. The whole day is come and go, so you don't have to be here at 9 and stay until 3. Just come when it's convenient for you so you can enjoy that time with your child. So again, this is the high contrast room, and it's really interesting to see the babies. It's really interesting to see the babies here at the high contrast room on how they react to it. Their eyes are just fixated on some of these things. Again, the books, you can see that black and white that draws their attention. And then right next door is that color fiesta room that I was telling you about. Uh, we're close to Fiesta, so the babies are definitely going to be partying in this room. Obviously, all the colors that they can focus on. And then down here, we have they, um, the organization made some sounds. I guess you can play with this one, and that way they can... Oh, it's water. This one's water. So again, the different textures for them and the colors that obviously attract their attention. So later on this morning, stick with us, um, GMSA at 8.30. We're going to be taking a tour around the library. It's going to be a big party for the big for the babies because it's the first floor, second floor, third floor, and the auditorium that are going to have events for these babies on Baby Day. Back to you. That is too cool, Alicia. Baby Fiesta. I can't wait. And this also sounds like a lot of fun, building rockets. But building rockets and making them reach a certain altitude in a certain amount of time, all while competing with other students across the country, takes a lot of hard work. Yes, it does. And students at the Kruger School of Applied Technologies are putting in that work, working as a team, and they're also making a difference along the way. We picked a plastic nose cone for durability in case it crashes into the ground. When building rockets, you need to think of everything, and that's what these students with the Kruger School of Applied Technologies are doing. So when we're building this rocket in the computer program, we have all of these constraints in mind, so we're actually simulating what a real-world environment is where they're building in constraints. We have to build to these constraints in order to be allowed to compete in the competition. This Principles of Applied Engineering class is all about project-based learning. And they also have an extra advanced engineering project that lasts for the entire school year. That's the very large rocket you see on the table. So they flew the smaller rocket before um, to collect data on, and now they're using that data to make the bigger one and to make predictions. And all their projects are built online first before they are built for real. This uses CO2 as a power source. We use a CAD program to design it, but before that we had to research about cars in general. The students work as a team. That means everything from sawing to building to using physics. But these are eighth graders and they're doing some high level kinetic energy calculations and thrust to weight ratios and trying to crunch data from our practice flight so that they can actually make predictions for the full scale flight that'll be more powerful and it's a safety issue. So they make sure our numbers are good. The students are also involved in community outreach to promote STEM careers, so they are making presentations to students their own age and younger. During those, we've had to teach 
and you learn a lot about how to speak to other people. I really see my skills improving on presentation. Like when I was a sixth grader, I had no way to talk to anybody. I was like, no, I would not like to stand up and talk. But now I'd happily do it. And I'm seeing all of these benefits that will help me in the work field when I go to apply to jobs. All of the stuff I've learned in eighth grade that's going to do so much. And the students are competing in the American Rocketry Challenge. That's right. Their qualification flight scores need to be submitted by April. And shortly after that, they will find out if they make it to the finals. So good luck to them. And fun fact, real quick, Kruger School of Applied Technologies. It's KSAT. Oh, look at that. It's so cool. We saw a rocket with KSAT on there. Like, oh, we're going to the moon. <laughs> well, maybe not, not that far, but, you know, one day, one day. Expect more. Yes. 8, 10, 44 degrees out. <laughs> All right, ahead on GMSA, we have a sneak peek on what to expect for Texas Eve. Ooh. And are you a Nintendo fan? Mm, no. <laughs> okay. Well, even if you're not, a new entertaining way for you to enjoy your flights. Ooh. More details up next. So we know, but my, my husband and my daughter, yes. Anyway, taking a look outside with live cam. Woo, warmed up, 44 degrees. Just kidding. It was 40 when we got in this morning, so we're happy with that. But we're going to check in with Sarah to see what we can expect for the rest of your day and your weekend. Stay with us. And welcome back. It's 814. So Nintendo is offering busy travelers a chance to break away for a little fun. Just a little bit. A little fun. Several major airports are going to be offering up free Nintendo pop-up lounges with comfortable seating and charging stations for your phone. So here's the best part. Travelers can spend time playing Nintendo Switches. It's the newest gaming system. Come on. Mm -hmm. The lounges will be available at D.C., Seattle, Dallas, Chicago. Whew, there's a lot. All over. Nintendo's on-the-go lounges open Thursday and will be available through the end of March. Very cool. All right. So the question is... What is your favorite gaming system? Oh my goodness. I know, putting you right on the spot. We okay. only ask the hardest Actually, hitting questions. Actually, to be here. honest, the PC. PC? I was, I was oh, the computer say. games. Yeah. Nice. I played a lot of Sims and... <laughs> <laughs> I like old Pac-Man arcade game. Yeah. PS4 works too. Sure. Yeah. All right. Let's go ahead and take a look at this morning's sunrise because temperatures are pretty chilly out there this morning, but clouds have really moved in. This is a look at this morning's sunrise. You can see the clouds moving in, but right at about sunrise, the horizon opened up a little bit and we were able to see the sunshine uh, shining through that cloud deck. And again, it's mostly cloudy outside right now. Uh, and that's a big difference from the last couple of days when we've been just dealing with sunshine. Temperatures this morning on the chilly side. A lot of us still in the 30s, like up in Comfort. It's 36 degrees, 39 in Bulverde. Uh, temperatures uh, right around 40 degrees out toward Tarpley and Bandera. It's 44 at JBSA uh, Randolph. It's 41, 44 at San Antonio International Airport. Wider view here, a little bit warmer out toward Del Rio. Uh, Del Rio dealt with some cloud cover uh, overnight, and that kind of acted like a blanket and kept temperatures a little warmer than us here in San Antonio. Meanwhile, up in Austin, clear skies, 30 34 degrees there. Humidity. It's pretty low right now. Okay, dew points are in the 30s and in the 40s, but it's actually been rising over the last 24 hours. And this is a great hint at what's to come over the next couple of days. It'll be a touch muggy tomorrow and it'll be humid on Monday. In fact, dew points are about 10 to 15 degrees warmer than they were this time yesterday. Again, because moisture is starting to return to San Antonio. It's subtle at the moment and it's nice and dry outside, but clouds are going to be uh, sticking around for most of the Day today. We'll have mostly cloudy skies into the afternoon, but because we will be able to see some sunshine through those clouds, we'll warm up pretty nicely. 65 degrees for the high temperature today. South winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. We'll spend the first day of the part of the day cool in the 50s. After topping off in the 60s, we'll struggle to cool off that much. Temperatures are going to be in the still be in the upper 50s by 10 o'clock, which again is cool, but definitely not chilly. So if you weren't able to go out last night for Valentine's Valentine's Day. You're going out tonight. Just know that you'll want a light jacket with you, but you won't need that heavy winter coat uh, for your Saturday evening plans. And then this week we're going to have wacky temperatures. All right, it'll be warmer tomorrow near 75. Monday will be near 80 degrees. Then 
A strong cold front, another strong cold front will be on the way, making it to San Antonio at some point in the day on Tuesday, and our temperatures will fall into the 40s, not only Tuesday night, but also on Wednesday and Thursday. All day will be in the 40s, and all day we'll have areas of drizzle and light rain in the forecast. Again, that front moving through on Tuesday, drizzle and light rain sticking in the forecast, not amounting to much in the way of rainfall totals, but just enough to keep it gray keep it damp and again notice that temperatures will stay above freezing but it is going to be cold and breezy so enjoy this weekend will be warmer uh, than we will in the middle of next week and even very warm on president's day on monday a lot of kids off for a three-day weekend the weather should cooperate just a little bit muggy and a little bit warm before winter returns in the middle of the week so enjoy that warm weather. I think that's good advice, yeah. Steph. Thank you, Sarah. Yep. Thanks, Sarah. 818, 44 degrees out. And just ahead, are you nuts about nuts? Hmm. Well, today is your day. It's National Almond Day. <laughs> good morning and happy Saturday, 821 this Saturday morning. And per every Saturday, if you haven't eaten yet, I'm so sorry. We've been eating all morning long. Yeah, we're lucky. We have some cake from SA Live. <laughs> anyway, right now we have a sneak peek from KSAT's Texas Eats, hosted by our resident foodie, David Elder, and that airs today at 10 a.m. That's right. In this clip, David Elder is at the rodeo talking with Chris Taylor from Cowboy Cookin'. Welcome back to Texas Eats. There's nothing like walking around the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo with the Texas-sized turkey leg. But there's so much more delicious food out here that you gotta try. When you're walking around the rodeo and you're looking for something with a little bit extra bite to it, look no further than the Pioneer Wagon Cowboy Cooking Booth. And when you come out here, guess what? They got rattlesnake sausage on the menu. Let's go inside and see what else they're cooking up. With me right here, Chris Taylor. Now, you're going to be talking to me about what you got going on at this booth. And you got a little bit of like wild, exotic things in here. I mean, you see a picture of a rattlesnake on the outside of the booth. Well, and that it stops people in their tracks. With the rattlesnake, we actually make a sausage that has real rattlesnake meat in it. All right, this is the rattlesnake sausage. Give it a try. That's really good. It's almost like a bratwurst kind of flavor to it. I have a lot of people compare it to a high-end bratwurst. I'll be honest, he brought, he brought some in the other day. You got I had a some. Sneak peek. It was yeah. Delicious. I got a sneak peek of the sneak peek. Yeah, a That's sneak right. taste. Sneak taste, exactly. And so if you want to know more about this delicious rodeo food in our 9 o'clock hour, we're going to have Elder come in here himself. He's going to be in the studio, and he's going to give us a little more insight. Yeah, can't wait. Can't Sarah's wait. face just lit up. I've never seen her happier I know. about anything. Surprise! <laughs> <laughs> so now 823, 44 degrees out. And today you have the perfect excuse to go nuts. It's National Almond Day. Good morning and welcome back. If you're nuts about nuts, then it's the day to go nuts. Impressive. He just Look ate some right now. Look at that. <laughs> so you have the perfect excuse. It's National Almond Day. These are almonds. These are almonds. And here are some fun facts about almonds from Foodimentary. The ancient nut is mentioned several hmm. times in both the New and Old Testament as symbols of divine approval. Divine approval. Mm. While roasted almonds are delicious, don't eat them raw. What? I always eat almonds raw. This is terrible. <laughs> Apparently the acid in them can actually kill you if you eat more than a handful. That is yes. a lie. Hey, I've heard of that. What you eat as raw almonds, mm -hmm. they're not actually raw. Raw, okay. that's true. They're cooked a little. Yes, that's Perfect. true. Thank Got you, me Sarah. nervous, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah, for clarifying. Although I like to live on the edge. And why not wash that goodness down with a tall glass of almond milk? Huh. Not just a name, it really comes from almonds. Yeah, and these, by the way, have chocolate, so even better. Delicious. I actually kept these in my car. Didn't even know it was almond day. Always stay ready. Always prepared. Nice. All right, time now, 828, 44 degrees out. And a scam that has affected millions of people who are looking for love. Ahead on GMSA, we will tell you how to avoid these scams. Plus, a six-year-old girl who is escorted out of school and admitted into a mental health facility. Still ahead on GMSA what that girl's parents are now saying about the situation. Good morning and happy Saturday. It is 831, February 15th. 
Happy after Valentine's Day. Ooh. Hope you're still enjoying your weekend. Did you guys celebrate accordingly? We we did, and you know what? It's a lot of fun because of my little one. I mm -hmm. mean, she was so excited about getting her little Valentine's box ready, and you know all the little Valentine's treats for her classmates. So it's a, it's a fun holiday. Nice. What about you, Sarah? Yeah, it's like Halloween part yeah. two for kids because they get all that candy at, at class. But my, my Valentine's Day was good. I had a nice steak dinner. We cooked it at home though, it was still pretty good. Temperatures outside are on the chilly side. It's 44 degrees in San Antonio, 41 up in Kerrville, 43 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 45 in Hondo, 45 at Simpson and 45 down in Pleasanton. And as you can see in the video behind me, Clouds have returned and it'll be mostly cloudy today into the afternoon. You know, yesterday was completely sunny, uh, but despite the cloud cover, we're still going to warm up nicely. We'll be near 65 degrees in the afternoon with the wind from the south at 5 to 10, even warmer tomorrow and as we start the week. But a strong cold front is on the way. That'll bring a chance for rain and really send temperatures tumbling. I've got a look at the rest of today's forecast, the rest of the weekend forecast, and that temperature tumble coming up in a few minutes. Max. Thanks, Sarah. It was complicated stuff for those not trained in the sciences, but critical testimony for both sides are now needed in the trial of William Perkins. He is accused of murder, and our Paul Venema takes us into the courtroom as a forensic scientist takes a stand. Six gunshots ended an early morning argument outside this east side strip center almost three years ago. 34-year-old Jonathan Ashford was killed, 41-year-old William Perkins arrested at the scene and booked for murder. He admitted firing the shots. Testimony from a forensic scientist during Perkins' murder trial validated that. Perkins may have discharged a firearm, handily discharged firearm, or was in close proximity to a discharged firearm. That conclusion based on gunshot residue found in his hands. Tests on the hands of Ashford showed no residue. The conclusions are it's indeterminate if Jonathan Ashford discharged a firearm, handled a discharged firearm, or was in close proximity to a discharged firearm. Though Perkins' lawyer claims that this is a case of self-defense, prosecutors say the lack of forensic evidence suggests this was murder, not self-defense. A uh, murder, they say, the result of a lover's triangle. According to earlier testimony, Ashford's wife Stacy and Perkins were involved in an intimate affair. His lawyer, while admitting the affair, said it was over and the couple was only phone friends at the time of the shooting. We expect prosecutors to rest their case early next week. Then it'll be up to the defense to begin calling witnesses to support their self-defense claim. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Paul Venema. A decision finally handed down to a local troubled school district. The Texas Education Commissioner announcing yesterday that it is appointing a conservator to Harlandale ISD. Now, in a letter to the district, the commissioner also revealed it is lowering the school's accreditation status to accredited warned. Now, that means that the district exhibits deficiencies in academic and or financial performance. If the district doesn't address the issues, it could lead to probation or revocation of its accreditation status. And the Texas Education Agency has been investigating that district since 2017 after allegations of violating the Open Meetings Act, nepotism and mishandled contracts. And the conservator is expected to be presented to school board members during Tuesday's school board meeting. Top of your morning headlines, a story that continues to spark outrage this morning. A six-year-old girl escorted out of school and into a police car. The school calling authorities to get the girl committed to a mental health facility. Now the question many people are asking this morning, did they go too far? ABC's Mona Kosar Abdi is tracking the latest. This morning, Martina Fox says her daughter Nadia's life is forever changed after the six-year-old was committed by her school to a mental health facility for two days. I felt anger, disappointment, but I think the biggest emotion I felt was helpless. You can see Nadia here in this body cam video being calmly escorted out of her Florida elementary school by police. Thank you. Yeah, I police car. You want to ride with me? Falk says last Tuesday, the school reached out to tell her Nadia, who has special needs, was throwing chairs and having a tantrum. That's when the school called a licensed medical health counselor who invoked the Baker Act, a Florida law that allows for the involuntary detention of someone deemed a threat to themselves and others. No, you're not going to jail. You will not go to jail. 
But when police arrived, officers can be heard questioning the school's decision once they interacted with Nadia. Yeah, that's why I said I think they're they're pushing the button because when I got there, she's been so cooperative with me and talking, sat down. She's perfect. She is fine. There's yeah. nothing wrong with her. Now Falk is demanding answers. Why? Why is this necessary? In a statement, Duval Public Schools tells ABC their staff followed procedure and acted lawfully, adding, quote, the police officers were not present during the events which motivated the school to call child guidance. There are so many parents who feel helpless, who feel the same way that I feel, and I'm not going to give up until we get justice. Fox attorney says they're considering legal action, saying the school violated Nadia's civil rights. There is never a scenario when a six-year-old child with special needs should be placed in the back of a police car wondering if she's going to jail. And again, that was Mona Kosar Abdi reporting. All right, well, back here at home happening right now, we got baby yoga, baby DJs, baby art, and so much more babies <laughs> taking over the Central Library, all in honor of the second annual Baby Day. So cute. And the San Antonio Public Library hosting today's big event in partnership with the organization First Three Years to help babies have fun and bond with other little ones. Our Alicia Barrera is live at the Central Library. Good morning. Aww. Good morning. Well, Little Red Dragon is another organization that has helped out. And right now we're in the Shadow and Shine room. And I'm in one of these shadow boxes. Um, these are designed for children. But if you're a parent, you're really going to all around here. But inside the shadow boxes, let me show you what's going on here. These kids can explore. Um, inside they have the different that they can touch. I think these are little sponges to the right, uh, maybe some sandpaper, and then of course a reflection, all to catch their attention. Be able to play with different fabrics that shine, shimmer, all that cool stuff that they're going to be able to do. Also, well, it's all about the lights as well. So over on this side, the kids, they're going to be able to explore sounds and sights. So we'll just turn one of these on, and they have different sounds here, and this one is really cool. I've flipped it over and you can see all the glitter. So this for the kids, really I got to hang out with some of the babies yesterday and they got to play with this and it really draws their attention. You can just imagine they follow these little um, magnets, clear magnets here that they can play with. And this is just all specifically to engage the children. Um, we saw little toddlers here playing with this um, while the moms and the babies were hanging out over here. But it's obviously also to encourage bonding between the parents and the child. And then the baby, the toddler, really gets to make other friends and have a lot of fun. But there are also other activities that the babies can get involved in. We'll have infant and toddler yoga. We'll have a DJ dance party in the afternoon. Our literacy caravan will be here for children with older siblings. Outdoors, we're going to have a sand and sound garden with help from the San Antonio Botanical Gardens. Uh, Brighton Center is bringing their early childhood development specialists to offer classes on things like baby sign and infant massage. Again, there's so many events, and the cool thing about this event, it's completely free. Baby Day is happening today starting at 9 a.m., so you have about 30 more minutes to get here until 3 p.m., and you can come and go as you please. Another cool thing, obviously, babies equal strollers, so you don't have to worry about hauling that all over the library. There is some stroller parking, and again, this is so cool because it's not only this first floor where we're at here, second, third floor, the auditorium, and um, put this on your calendars for today. At 1 p.m., the San Antonio Symphony is going to have a violinist here, and they're going to be playing some tunes for the babies, so that's also going to be really cool. So stick around, GMSA at 9. I'll be giving you other tours of the areas here on the first, second, and third floor of the Central Library. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. That is so cool, an action-packed baby day. I uh, know, 1 p.m., so violinist, that's Aww. awesome. All right, 840, 44 degrees up. And a classic toy turning 60. Watch what the company owner mm. is doing to celebrate. I was never very good at Etch-a-Sketch. Oh my gosh, that was horrible. Horrible. I was going to say awful <laughs> and horrible at the same time. Is that a word? Horrible? No, horrible. <laughs> I was Perfect. <laughs> I was awful. All right, 44 degrees out there right now. What does the rest of the day, what does the weekend look like? We're going to check in with our Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. 
welcome back. It's 844. Romance scams are costing Americans millions of dollars. That's according to the Federal Trade Commission. The commission says last year consumers lost $201 million to scammers preying on people looking for love. So here's how a romance scammer tends to work. Scammers first build a relationship with their victim, then ask that person for money. The FTC says more than 25,000 consumers filed a report on romance scams just in 2019. Not okay. good. Okay, so that's not good, but this is good. I was able to go out to Marion, <laughs> Texas, uh -huh. and teach some uh, pre-K to second graders about the weather, and I got the best gift Aww. in the world. Mrs. Kelly's second grade students decided to give me this gift to the two. They're saying, teach me about, about the, the weather. weather. Teach, teach, teach me, me about, about the weather. weather. Aww. And, and they, they said, come on, Sarah Spivey. Can you get it together? Wow. <laughs> Which, you know, that I'll try. That is try to too cute. Together. Yeah, way to go, Mrs. Kelly's second grade class out in Marion, Texas. Thank you guys so much for that. It was such a pleasure to meet you guys and to uh, go all the way out there to Marion. Wonderful group of uh, KSAT watchers there. So let's go ahead and take a look at the weather. Uh, outside right now, I'll teach you about the weather. Uh, we have got uh, cloudy skies at the moment, and even in some places, visibility is lowered. We've got visibility down to three miles out in Hondo, down to five in Castroville, just a, uh, some haze on the horizon there and some patchy fog in some places. We really saw the clouds start to increase around San Antonio right at about 630 before sunrise. Uh, that cloud deck really started to take over Bear County from the south. And uh, we uh, have since been dealing with these cloudy skies and temperatures are on the chilly side. It's 44 in San Antonio, 47 in New Braunfels, 42 in Kerrville, 45 in Hondo, 51 out in Del Rio and 50 in Laredo, a little bit warmer out toward Del Rio where they had some cloud cover overnight. But take a look at how cold temperatures are across the northern tier of the United States and especially in New England. 15 in Cleveland, 19 in New York, 11 below in Caribou, Maine. We're going to see another shot of cold air in the middle of next week. But for now, we'll just be dealing with a little bit more cloud cover today and temperatures should be pretty comfortable in the afternoon, right around 65 around San Antonio, but closer to 75 along 35 south toward Laredo and Catula. Increasing clouds out there at 65 degrees for the high, spending most of the morning in the 50s though, so it's going to be chilly as we start the day, but really nice in the afternoon. South breeze at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Again, I said that strong cold front will arrive in the middle of the week. We'll warm up though before then. Tomorrow will be in the 70s. Uh, Monday will be near 80 degrees, and that front will move through at some point on Tuesday, and that means on Wednesday and Thursday, we're going to stay in the 40s all day long. On top of that, Take a look at this forecasting model. Looks like we'll be able to see some areas of light rain and drizzle as well on Wednesday and Thursday. So first part of the week is going to be warm and even a little humid on Monday. Then with that front moving through on Tuesday, it's going to get cold and we're going to feel like winter once again. So the tale of two seasons here, we've got spring both tomorrow and Monday and then wintry uh, during the middle of the week. The temperatures should stay above freezing, so we won't have to worry about a wintry mix, but just know that it's going to be pretty damp, dreary, uh, and gray throughout the middle of the week. We'll start to clear out on Friday, but even then it's going to be nice and chilly as well. You know, all of January we were so warm, but this month in February we've had a few of these wintry days kind of mixed in, and it's very fitting. Uh, for rodeo weather yes. across San Antonio. Makes up for not having it so much in January. I think so. I like the cooler weather. <laughs> yeah, I like both. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thanks, Sarah. 848, 44 degrees out. And a play about the danger that women can face in the workforce. Next on GMSA, we take you backstage for a sneak peek. 852 this Saturday morning, a play based in the late 20s and early 30s that tells the danger that women faced in the American workforce. RJ Marcus takes us behind the curtains to give us a sneak peek of this amazing story. The Sheldon Vexler Theater is taking audiences back in time for their latest production, The Shining Lives. 
tells the story of women who worked in a dial painting factory in the 1920s, and they painted the uh, dials with a luminous material called radium. They were eventually, and over a long period of time, poisoned by that material, and this it's the story about the, the company essentially firing these women for getting sick. The, the story is about these women fighting back and taking the company to court. So since this play is based on real people and real events, um, we could go back and do some research and learn about these real women and all the things that they went through. What makes this show feel particularly powerful is the intimacy of the Black Box Theater. This show is about telling the story of these women and it is an intimate story. So to be able to have people so close to us makes it that much more intimate. This show has a lot of different characters that most people can relate to, at least one of them. I feel very responsible for this story because they are real people and I think that's the, I feel like we're responsible for telling their story. The Shining Lives is now playing at the VEX until March 1st. For GMSA, I'm RJ Marcus. All right, time now, 8.53, 44 degrees out. And a lot of people celebrating Valentine's yesterday. And when I say everyone, I mean everyone, including animals at the zoo. We're going to take a look. 856 this Saturday morning, and it is a special birthday shout out. Etch a Sketch turning 60 years old this year. Oh, 60 years young. No, the classic toy is shaking things up for the anniversary, though. Company, it's working with other brands for limited edition versions of the red framed drawing toy. Now, they include Monopoly, Rubik's Cube, NASA, and comic creator Stan Lee. This is the 85th anniversary of Monopoly. Obviously, the best game ever created. The question is, <laughs> did you ever get in a fight over Monopoly with your family? Um, yeah. No, not too bad. Then you guys didn't play it. No, I didn't play it right. <laughs> All right. Well, love is in the air at the Chicago Zoo yesterday. Aw, zoo staff handed out special valentines to their favorite animal friends. And while we might prefer chocolate, flowers, Josie and Charger, the sea lions, enjoyed their gelatin cake. Mmm. Gilbert's <laughs> prickly heart melted over his sweet potato treat, the heart-shaped goodies, special gifts just for the holiday, and a perfect way to spread the love. Aw, they look so happy. So happy. Happy <laughs> Valentine's Day, everybody. 857, 47 degrees out. It's getting warmer. Yes, a little bit. So sliding up the bar at ATV's watering hole to get a taste of Texas craft beer. Still ahead, a sneak peek at this morning's Texas Eats. And let's rodeo San Antonio if you're looking for something to keep you busy and some for good family fun tonight. We got you covered just ahead. A look at the events happening today. Plus, the Central Library hosting Baby Day, how little ones Ooh. under the age of three will be able to play with and explore with tons of activities. We have the latest involving the coronavirus, where U.S. passengers are headed next and how close to home it may be. And one step closer to an agreement that can bring U.S. troops home. Coming up, details on a deal with the Taliban. But first, we're going to take a live look out at the Alamo City. 47 degrees to start your Saturday morning. What is the rest of the day? What does the rest of the weekend look like? Our Sarah Spivey has all of the answers coming up in just a few moments. Good morning, 9 o'clock this Saturday, February 15th. Good morning. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah, not too bad, 47. You know what? Started off at 40, <laughs> so we're only going up from here. So we're here. happy because yeah, it warmed nice. up for us. You we got good news. Yeah, I do have good news. We actually started off in the upper 30s. Mm. Really, our morning low was 38 degrees, so we're already about 10 degrees warmer than that. Now it's still chilly outside, of course. It's 47 degrees, and humidity is actually rising. It's at 80% right now. Uh, we won't really be feeling the effects of the humidity until tomorrow and on Monday, but still, uh, you can see that the clouds have definitely Definitely returned. It's still 39 in comfort. We're starting to see temperatures get a little closer to 50 degrees out toward New Braunfels. It's 48 in Castroville, 48 at Port SA, uh, 47 uh, out of JBSA Randolph. And for this weekend, we're really going to be warming up a little bit. Uh, today we'll see increasing clouds, 65 degrees for your Saturday high temperature. Overnight, we'll really only get down to the low 50s. So again, we were at 38 this morning. It'll be in the low 50s tomorrow morning. So warm 
warmer. 75 for the afternoon high tomorrow with some morning fog mixed in there uh, for your Sunday. All in all, a pretty nice weekend, but even warmer as we start next week before our next cold front arrives. And we just got the pollen count in. Ash is the main culprit today. It's moderate at 130. Mold is low at 80. And again, I'll be back to talk about those temperature swings. Warm on Monday, very chilly in the middle of the week with a chance for rain. A lot to unpack in the forecast coming up in just a few. Max. Thank you, Sarah. Just into our newsroom in the last 10 minutes, we've learned some of the U.S. citizens on the Diamond Princess cruise ship in Japan will be arriving here in San Antonio. About 380 U.S. citizens and their families on the ship were docked in Japan. They were actually put under a two-week quarantine back on February 5th. Several news outlets, including ABC and The Wall Street Journal, report that there may be two evacuation flights this weekend. Another site that may receive the evacuees could be Travis Air Force Base. That's near Sacramento, California. We are still waiting to get more details from Lackland. This is the story we've been following closely, and you can find the latest right now on KSAT.com. And on Capitol Hill, there is a tentative agreement between the U.S. and the Taliban, the potential deal leading to a withdrawal of American troops in Afghanistan. ABC's Stephanie Ramos has more. The U.S. and the Taliban have reached a deal that military leaders call a crucial first step in ending America's longest war. And we've had a series of productive bilateral and collective meetings about the path forward. The State Department says the agreement right now is to reduce violence in Afghanistan for seven days, a modified truce. The Taliban agreeing to stop bombings and rocket attacks for that week. If that is successful, the U.S. and Taliban would sign a peace deal that could lead to troop withdrawal, all in exchange for the Taliban's commitment to not allow Afghanistan to be a safe haven for terrorism. This comes after Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and Defense Secretary Mark Esper met Friday in Munich with Afghanistan's president. An initial U.S. Taliban agreement was all but done last September. President Trump inviting the militant group to Camp David, then backing out and tweeting about it after an attack that killed a U.S. soldier. The president hinting at a possible resolution at this year's State of the Union. In Afghanistan, the determination and valor of our war fighters has allowed us to make tremendous progress and peace talks are now underway. Experts say U.S. troop removal won't mean the end to conflict in Afghanistan. And our agreement will mean that the U.S. will leave Afghanistan. There will be lots of bloodshed after the U.S. leaves. Also in politics, Democratic presidential candidates shifting their focus to Nevada a week before the caucus. Former Vice President Joe Biden confident he can finish out in the top two in the western state after falling behind in the first two voting contests. Nevada's racial diversity and strong union presence playing a critical role in how the nation's third contest will play out. Senator Amy Klobuchar facing tough questions though about her immigration record and Bernie Sanders looking for another strong finish saying that he is trying to win the state of Texas. The caucus set for next Saturday. In the state of South Carolina, family and loved ones of a young pregnant mother are mourning after finding out she and her unborn child were killed. Belton Sheriff's Office investigating a shooting that left 33-year-old Tamal Nash at pregnant 21-year-old Sabrina Lowry's home. Deputies say she was shot in the stomach and taken to the hospital where she and her unborn child died during surgery. It is not clear right now how or if Lori and, and Nash knew each other, but deputies say this is being considered an isolated incident and there is no public threat. Happening right now, coming back here at home, babies invading the Central Library. Yeah, we'll yeah, say babies. Sort, sort, sort of, sort of, yeah. <laughs> the second annual baby day. Little ones under the age of three, they're going to be able to play and explore with over 30 interactive activities. So this is a cute event. <laughs> an Alicia, a cute invasion. There you go. Alicia Vera live at Central Library with more. Good morning. Well, the kids totally today can say, Mom, Hold the juice box, I'm parting. Um, there's going to be more than 30 events. Max, Stephanie, y'all said it well. Um, and right now this morning, so hold on, before I show you what's actually going on behind me, they have something to hype the kids up, to have the kids learn, and then also to calm them down and kind of find their zen. And this morning, they have the um, parent and infant 
yoga as well as at 9.30, the toddler yoga session is going to be happening. So there's a lot of um, interactive activities for the kids. And this is so cool because kids obviously do not have to be quiet here at the library today. So many events for them on the first, second, and third floor. There's also going to be a uh, baby DJ happening. But also some rooms are designed specifically for the infants, um, newborns to five months old. And those are called the high contrast room. Let's take a look. When we expose them to things like high contrast environments, that helps them develop their vision and it makes it easier to connect with the world around them because they can see that high contrast environment more easily. When we allow them to explore textures and colors and just in general use their senses, we're helping them form connections in the brain. So now we have to be a little bit more quiet because yoga class has started for the toddlers. Um, another cool thing, again, like I said, the San Antonio Symphony, they're going to have a violinist out here at 1 um, this afternoon. That's happening uh, later today. All these events are completely free. It starts right now, 9 a.m., and goes on till 3 p.m. And it's a come and go, so you don't have to stay the whole time or you can just come for one particular event. One of the cool things that I saw also, this is completely geared for babies, so they even have a baby backdrop. So for instance, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all social media, it's baby size. It's literally at my hip. It's the cutest thing. So parents, if uh, or you're babysitting today, this is an awesome place to bring the babies out today. Back to you. All right. Thank you so much, Alicia. Rodeo season is underway, and if you're looking for something to do tonight, we've got a few things for you. It's a great place to enjoy some great food, great live music, and of course, the live stock shows, if that's your thing. And you can also check out the archery event that's happening today, 4.30. And at 6.30 tonight, Keith Urban performing. This is at 1, okay, 1 in the afternoon and 7 tonight. So you have lots of options. And if you haven't gone to the rodeo yet, grab your tickets, enjoy the fun. Definitely check out the food. So many options out there. Yes, you still have time. Personally, it's my favorite part. All right, 908, 47 degrees out. And getting the best bang for your buck. Still ahead, the smart home tech you should look into before you buy. And taking a nice cold sip of Texas beer. Breakfast of Champions right there. Up next on GMSA, a preview of what you can expect on today's Texas Eats. And speaking of cold, it's 47 degrees, but it was a little colder earlier this morning. So if you're just waking up now, enjoy. Grab your jacket and we're gonna check in with Sarah for the latest for today. We'll be right back. Texas Eats at the Rodeo. And now we're here at my favorite place at the Rodeo, the Watering Hole. And inside the Watering Hole, you have the HEB Craft Beer Tap Room and the HEB Wine Cellar. And we're gonna go inside both places and see what they're pouring up. inside the tap room and it's a family friendly environment in here. They also have a lot of beers, craft beers on tap from around Texas. Retail Conservation from San Antonio and actually proceeds from this beer go to benefit the San Antonio Zoo. Give it a try. See, like every single one of these beers, you know what, I just like beer, straight up. This is light, it's an easy drinking beer, goes with anything, pairs well with your favorite day. Well, it is uh, nice and chilly outside right now. In the past about three hours or so, we've seen the clouds return, as you can see from uh, the time lapse of this morning sunrise. A little bit of peak in the clouds there on the horizon allowed us to see that sunrise, but it's still pretty chilly out there. Those clouds are around, and not only can we see those clouds on the uh, time lapse there, but we can also see them from space. This is a look at the satellite image, and you can see that we're mostly cloudy right now around Bear County. A little bit of sunshine out near Seguin and Floresville at the moment. Wider view here, Del Rio completely cloudy at the moment, but half of uh, Valverde County, the western half, is completely clear. So more clouds right now than what we've seen in the last couple of days, and it's chilly. 47 degrees in San Antonio, 43 will 
Verde, 48 New Braunfels, 45 at Bernie Stage, 39 still up in Comfort. But temperatures are starting to get into the 50s and will be in the 50s for the rest of the morning. So definitely on the chilly side, it's 53 in Del Rio and 54 in Laredo. Now, I know that this graphic doesn't look like much. Dew points are in the 30s and 40s, which is pretty dry. But take a look down toward the coastal plain. You can see that green color. Humidity is actually rising. Now, today you won't really notice the higher humidity, but this is a great indicator of what's to come. A little bit more muggy tomorrow for your Sunday and definitely humid for Monday. Dew points are up about 10 to 15 degrees from this time yesterday, so we'll notice that humidity by tomorrow. Definitely in the future cast today, just mainly some clouds around. Uh, we'll see a few peaks of sunshine into the afternoon, and that'll be enough to allow us to warm up pretty significantly. We started off at 38 degrees. We'll be at 58 around the lunch hour and then in the afternoon around 65 for the high. So very comfortable day. South winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Notice temperatures are not going to cool off that quickly this evening. We'll still be in the upper 50s by 10 o'clock. Now that's still sweater weather, but it's definitely not that winter jacket weather that we've been experiencing the last couple of evenings. And speaking of temperatures, they're going to be a bit wacky this week. Tomorrow will be near 75, but on Monday will be near 80 degrees and then we've got another cold front on the horizon. That front will be making it to San Antonio by Tuesday. Tuesday will get to about 70 degrees, but then temperatures are going to fall into the 40s not only Tuesday night, but also all day Wednesday and Thursday. It's going to be chilly. We won't dip to near freezing, but with a wind from the north up to 20 to 25 miles per hour Tuesday night through Thursday, it's going to be very cold. It's going to feel a lot like winter. It's going to be damp too because we'll have areas of drizzle and light rain all day on Wednesday and all day on Thursday as well. So just to summarize everything for you, increasing clouds today, comfortable in 65, warmer tomorrow, 75 degrees, muggy and very warm on Monday, near 80 degrees, that front moving through, and we'll be looking at drizzle and light rain uh, throughout the rest of the uh, week with temperatures on the chilly side, only clearing out on Friday. Max, Stephanie? Change. Big change. Yeah, cold, and then, yeah, we got everything. <laughs> Every rodeo, thank you so much, Sarah. 916, 47 degrees out. And the best Valentine's present a kid can ask for. Still ahead, the surprise one army girl received this holiday. Oh, I love these. They never get old. Aww. And if you're getting techie at home, up next, how you can upgrade your home without breaking the bank. We'll be right back. And welcome back. It is 920. So from speakers to refrigerators, smart home technology is becoming more and more common in the products we use. Mm -hmm. But when preparing to sell your home, which upgrades will help you get the most bang for your buck? In this morning's Angie's List report, our Marilyn Moritz helps us find out what changes are actually worth that investment. In competitive housing market, sellers are looking for any way to get the edge. Smart home technology could be just the thing to set your home apart. Although still new, early data indicates an immediate return on investment for sellers who are investing in tech forward updates. How much return? A full smart home makeover might improve the home's value by as much as 5%. You might have to spend around $1,500 on a full smart home makeover, in including installation, but on a $250,000 home, the return on investment could be up around $13,000. That $1,500 price tag would include smart locks, lighting controls, thermostat, cameras, and a smoke alarm. If you want to start smaller, keep it simple and begin at the front of your home. I always tell people to start at the front door with a smart door lock. It'll make that first smart impression with prospective buyers. It'll also make things easier for your agent since they won't have to worry about keys and lock boxes when showing your home. This sort of technology can get pricey, so you may want to get help with installation by hiring a professional. They can also help you with protection from hacking. Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. Time now, 921, 47 degrees up. And a gift with no price tag. After the break, the touching moment caught on camera as a New York girl is reunited with her father. Good morning and happy Saturday, 924 this Saturday morning. And on a lighter note, in Long Island, New York, a fifth grader surprised with an extra special Valentine's gift this year. 
That's right. Her dad, Army Staff Sergeant Daniel London, surprised 10-year-old Alexis at school after an eight-month deployment in Afghanistan. Now, this marks the end of the third time he's had to serve overseas. He missed both her fifth and tenth birthdays. Now, she, when she was two years old, he deployed with her mother for 15 months, and she didn't even recognize him when she got home. But all of that is over now. Look at that. I That's know. so beautiful. How sweet. Like I was saying, this never gets old. I, know. I love these. We post them all the time and still undefeated. Oh, and he brought her flowers. How sweet. Happy Valentine's yes, Day. Yes, happy Valentine's. Let's take a look at some birthdays this weekend. Happy birthday, Janessa. Q pick, three years old. Happy birthday. And next up, Juliana, one year's happy first birthday. Aww. So cute. <laughs> Those glasses are adorable. Yes. All right, remember to keep posting your birthday pictures to ksat.com slash birthdays. Remember to include a name and an age. We show them every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday right here on Good Morning San Antonio. Time now is 926 and 47 degrees. All right. Well, an event full of babies. It, what were we talking about earlier? A cute invasion? Yes. Cute, A cute invasion, cute invasion of the Central Library. Our Alicia Barrera joining us live from the Central Library, and she's going to show us everything that it has to offer the second annual Baby Day event. Sneak peek, though, there's a baby DJ. Uh, and baby yoga. Also, Stranger Things fans, listen up. A new Let's go! season. Oh my goodness, <laughs> a new season coming. We have a sneak peek of the teaser coming up on GMSA. Have you seen it? I saw it on Twitter yesterday. I have not seen the oh, teaser. Oh, it's mind blowing. Plus, we have David Elder joining us live in studio. I actually just checked back in the kitchen. Is he here? We're gonna have, oh, he's here. Oh my goodness. We have a big surprise to show you <gasps> later on GMSA, a preview of what to expect during today's edition of Texas Eats. Good morning and happy Saturday, 9.30 this morning, February 15th. We are sprinting through this morning and sprinting through February. It's going by pretty quick, mm -hmm. uh, but did you have a nice Valentine's? I had a great Valentine's Day, went out to a nice dinner. Good. Got to sleep a little bit. Very exciting. I cherish sleep. Yes. People give no. me grief because I go to sleep early. On this shift, yes, mm -hmm. sleep is, is a prized possession. But it is actually starting to feel like February out there. Started, what? kind of high 30s this yeah. morning? Yeah, really yeah, cold. about 38 degrees for our morning low, so it was definitely chilly. And temperatures are warming up, but it's still cool out there. We're currently at 47 degrees at the airport, 48 at JBSA Randolph, uh, 44 up in Kerrville, 45 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 50 in Castroville. And today we will see more clouds than what we've been seeing uh, the last couple days. In fact, it's completely cloudy outside right now, 65 degrees for the high temperature, south wind at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Let's take a quick check of the aquifer. The aquifer is actually up four tenths of a foot over the past 24 hours, which is good news. Still benefiting from that rain earlier this past Last week. And as far as the pollen count goes, uh, we are done with mountain cedar at the moment, but ash, unfortunately, is the main culprit in the pollen count. It's moderate at 130, and we do have mold in the air, but it's low at 80 to 80 uh, uh, pollen grains per cubic meter of air. Well, mold spores per cubic meter of air. We've got a busy forecast. Uh, we've got a chance for rain. We've got uh, much colder weather and even a warm up too. So a lot to talk about, a lot to sort through. I hope you'll stick around for the forecast. I'll have that for you probably in about about 10 minutes. Max. Thank you, Sarah. Well, if you have a child under the age of three years old, listen up, because today is your day. It is a free all-day event happening right now at the Central Library, all in the celebration of babies. So cute. Little ones will be able to play with and explore with more than 30 interactive activities as part of the second annual Baby Day hosted by the San Antonio Public Library and the organization First Three Years. Our Alicia Beretta is live at the Central Library. Good morning. Good morning. Well, if you've never brought your child, taking your child to the San Antonio Botanical Garden, good news. They have brought the activities here to the San Antonio Public Library. And correct, we're at Central right now. And a lot of things, even outdoor activities, literary caravan, and also this awesome event here. We actually have some moms back here. I hadn't even noticed. Um, you met Crescencia earlier this morning. Uh, she's with the library. Why is this so important to have, you know, outdoor events for the kids too? Well, when it comes to building babies' brains, is it, it's important.
important for them to have access to fresh air, opportunities to move around, and really lots of lots of rich sensory experiences and opportunities to interact with others. So being outdoors, we're just taking those kinds of experiences to a different environment. And then we're actually going to walk over here and kind of show you what they have laid out for us, but this is all for the kids to kind of hands-on, um, hopefully not too dirty, but there's some stand, and then over here in this first bin, some plant clippings for play. So what does this teach the children over here? Well, with the plant clippings, they've got different textures, different aromas. You can have conversations with them about how these plants are used. These are all um, culinary. So they're from the Botanical Gardens Culinary Garden. So there are different ways that we can use them in food. Um, and it's just lots of opportunity to build vocabulary while talking about what they're experiencing. And another cool section over here, this is the other one that we want to show you, the sand. They have a few sand boxes here, so this is how it works. Just put the sand in. This teaches the children opportunities to talk about texture. We can listen to the noise that it makes as the sand and the gravel is falling into the box. Eventually this is going to get full and they'll want to back out. And so we're doing some science. We can talk about volume. Um, we can we can just have a lot of a lot of fun, a lot of learning experience. Christensia, thank you so much for being with us this morning. This event's going to be happening all day. It already started. You saw the moms, 9 a.m. It goes on till 3 p.m. Stroller parking. You saw the moms with the strollers. Good thing there's parking for them here. There's yoga. There's DJ. There's also baby massage, baby sign language, a bunch of things that babies and toddlers and their families can get involved with today. Back to you guys. So many choices. That's really cool. Thank you, Alicia. Thanks, Alicia. All right, taking a live look out at the road roadways right now. All looks clear. Everything is flowing very smoothly. 47 degrees out this morning, so if you are out and about running errands this morning, make sure to bring a jacket. But we are going to have your full forecast with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. All right, just into our newsroom in the last 10 minutes, we have learned some of the U.S. citizens on board the Diamond Princess cruise ship in Japan will be arriving here in San Antonio. About 380 U.S. citizens and their families on the ship docked in Japan were put under a two-week quarantine back on February 5th. Several news outlets, including ABC and The Wall Street Journal, say that there may be two evacuation flights happening this weekend. Another site that may receive the evacuees could be Travis Air Force Base in Sacramento, California. We are working to get more details from Lackland, and this has been a story we've been following very closely. You can find out the latest right now on KSAT.com. And the France health minister announcing today the first coronavirus death in Europe. An 80-year-old Chinese tourist who other French authorities say was initially turned away from two French hospitals. Now, the minister said she was informed Friday night of the death of the patient who had been in intensive care at the hospital in Paris after testing positive in late January. Now, as of today, four of the 11 confirmed virus cases in France have been, quote, cured and left the hospital. And the hospital where a patient with the coronavirus is being treated locally is sharing how it will prevent the spread of the virus. Yesterday, the chief medical officer of Methodist Health Care described the preventative measures it's taking while the patient is treated at Texan. Now, the doctors follow specific guidelines when putting on and removing the protective equipment. It's all done in a room which is just outside of the patient's actual room. Now, doctors start by putting on a CDC-approved gown and then a mask. And hospitals here in the Alamo City have set protocols in place for combating the coronavirus. Mission Trail Baptist Hospital says it is ready to deal with the coronavirus if it has to. Doctors will ask patients if they have traveled outside of the country and ask if they're experiencing any unusual symptoms. If patients do have symptoms related to the coronavirus, they'll be given face masks and placed in a separate isolation room. Doctors say they have not quarantined anyone yet, but they are ready for anything that comes their way. You can find more information right now on KSAT.com. And the city of San Antonio mourning the loss of Sergeant First Class Javier J. Gutierrez. He was killed in action during combat operations in Afghanistan on February 8th. And in honor of Sergeant First Class Gutierrez, Mayor Ron Nuremberg has ordered that flags in San Antonio be flown at half staff through his interment. Additionally, a moment of silence held during the February 13th City Council meeting. And time now, 937, 47 degrees out. And ahead on GMSA, we have David Elder right here in our studios to talk a little bit more about what food he got to try for Texas Eats. He is bringing us big prizes this morning. I've never been so excited about anything. And he, fun fact, he's actually wearing that hat. You're going to see him in just a few moments. <laughs> 
and taking a look outside with a live cam. Ooh. Hope you, yeah, <laughs> not as tasty looking out there, but it's gonna be better in the afternoon. We're gonna check in with Sarah and can't wait to see David. Yay, stay with us. Good morning and happy Saturday, 941 February 15th. I'm very excited about this. Watched it on Twitter yesterday <laughs> about three or four times. All right, here it is. Netflix and Duffer Brothers, is that the production company? Mm -hmm. All right, sure. <laughs> Giving Valentine's Day presents to fans like myself of Stranger Things, and it was everything I could ask for. So this will be a present for me as well because I haven't seen it yet. Ooh. But a new trailer for season four, so spoiler alert, if you haven't season three covered, your ears because the trailer answers a big question left hanging at the end of the previous installment. All right, here it is. So it features a beloved character, wait for it. Anticipation's killing me. For it. Boom! There it is. Oh. Hopper, who appeared to be dead at the end of season three. He looks like he is oh. back, and it looks like he's in Russia. Now, the teaser doesn't include any details about the new season or when it's going to be released, oh my but goodness. it's still guaranteed to set social media on fire with speculation. Whew. Wow! You did, you did a great job building that up. I tried. I mean, the, <laughs> it speaks for itself on that one. And if you want to know oh, what other goodness. events are coming up, let's see, we got you covered. That's right. If you're looking for plans to do with your family this next week, next Friday, the Ha Comedy? I was going to say Ha, or H-A Comedy. H-A, thank you. H-A, or it could be Ha, Ha, Ha. Uh -huh. Comedy Festival. It runs for three days, and Saturday is the Mardi Gras Festival and Parade from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. And then next Sunday is the Sunday Jazz Fest. It starts at 1 p.m. And if you're interested on this event or any other ones, time, location, any details, you can head to our website right now. And obviously, that is ksat.com. Very cool. Going back to Stranger Things, wow. I know. Okay, so if you, if you watch, just, you know, watching that, like, little mm -hmm. preview, yeah, it really just blew my mind. You, there you I was go. not expecting that. Perfect start to your Saturday morning. 943, 47 degrees out. That was my Valentine's present oh, to you. Oh, thank you, Max. I, I, that, I, I love it. covered almonds that I was throwing at Sarah. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'll have one. And we have our David Alder coming up next with a preview of today's edition of Texas Eats. These are the littlest tiniest babies we have ever had on the show. You are going to meet them coming up on Good Morning San Antonio. And taking a look outside with Trans Guide, things looking okay at I-10 Hildebrand. And I don't think we see any other problems on any other cameras, but as always, be careful when you're headed out there. Have a great Saturday. We'll be right back. Well, Beth is here from the Animal Defense League and has brought the tiniest <laughs> little itty bitties with her that we have ever seen. Who are these two? <laughs> this is Chipotle and Wendy. They are uh, just over a week old and they are a perfect example of bottle, bottle baby foster babies. Um, this is the kinds of babies that we are going to get lots and lots of in the springtime. Um, and they are a lot of work. They need to be fed very, very often and require a lot of care, but they are super cute and it is a, a great way to help us. Now, obviously you can't adopt these yet, but you can take them home and that's what that's what you're looking for because I know last year was a very, very busy year for all the shelters around. Never really got a break and now spring is right around the corner. Yeah, for sure. So our foster department has a lot of space for these babies right now um, because we're just kind of bracing for impact, waiting for them to come. And uh, we hope every year that we get more moms and babies together than we do babies without their moms. Obviously, mom is the best one to take care of them. Um, but if we don't have mom, we have lots of dedicated fosters, um, and you can be one of them, and they help us take care of them. If you were to take these home, you can. I know you can take them for any amount of time, 
that you can help out, but what's the average that somebody keeps them? Um, it really just depends on the animal and the needs of the animal. It also depends on their age mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, your availability as well and how much uh, time you can dedicate to them. But these babies are going to need foster for a little while. Like I said, they're just over a week old, so they've they've got a long journey ahead of them. Beth even has the, <laughs> the portable little nursery with her with <laughs> heating pad and everything, and she plugged in here at the, uh, at the studio. Yep. If you can help out, uh, again, they're cute as can be, head on over to 11300 Nacogdoches or the Paul Jolly Center across from the zoo and look at these little ones just rooting around there looking for looking for a meal 655-1481 is the number to call thank you dear so precious oh Aww. my goodness Chipotle. well let's go ahead and talk about the weather while we're at it uh, we are looking at uh, clouds really starting to move on in and those clouds are continuing to really blanket San Antonio uh, at the moment. So I guess, are we gonna go to the green screen here, guys? Or are we gonna keep, I'm talking to the guys behind and behind the scenes. Hopefully we can get on the green screen. But for now, just take a look at the temperatures. 47 degrees at San Antonio International Airport, 45 out at Kerrville. It's 45 in Hondo, 55 down in Pleasanton, 56 in Gonzales, 55 in LaGrange, and 50 in Austin. Take a look at temperatures around the nation. We're looking at below freezing up above Springfield, uh, and I guess we're not going to see me, so I'll just have to keep on talking here. High-res future cast sowing clouds are going to really start to clear out uh, by the afternoon, but until then we'll have to deal with this cloud cover. 67 around San Antonio for the afternoon high. Meanwhile, it's going to be 74 in Catula and 75 in Laredo for the high temperature. Take a look at these temperatures warming up. We'll be at 50 around 10, 56 around noon, 65 for the afternoon high. South winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Afternoon high is going to warm up even more. We'll be near 78 on Monday, so it's going to be hot. Uh, but then we'll get a front moving through on Tuesday. That'll drop our temperatures down into the 40s uh, for Wednesday and Thursday, and we'll have a chance for light drizzle and rain as well. So we've got a really wacky forecast here guys uh, nice today warmer tomorrow humid on monday and then back to the cold guys well i'll be checking with you that all is, week just to whack. find out that is yeah. why this is really <laughs> just <laughs> boom you know, they're showing up with turkey leg turkey, turkey leg. leg look at this i got turkey leg for everybody a small child oh, here goodness. we go we'll hand them out it's oh, like okay, here you go. oh my gosh mm. they're warm it's like a popsicle oh, thank you. Trade with you. like a meat popsicle okay thank you. sure I, I don't know the difference <laughs> i just wanted the biggest one oh, cheers. cheers turkey legs you guys it's rodeo Stock, san antonio stock show and rodeos oh, in town goodness. they got turkey legs out there this is like the most rodeo thing you can grab when you're out there so i gotta bring it to you yeah Thank that you. Right there. Oh, look at that. Look at it. Oh. Just come in. Wait, hold on, where is it? Oh. Coming in hot. Wow. I'm coming like augmented reality. You're like lightsabering. Oh. <laughs> okay, there it is. But you guys, it's a brand new episode of Texas. See, it's all about the rodeo today. And the coolest thing about it is that we're giving away a family four pack of tickets, $200 value to viewers on there. All you have to do is find the secret word, and we're giving out letters throughout each block. As you go along, you write down mm -hmm. the word, and at the very end, you go online to ksat.com slash Texas Eats, and you find the link, you enter on there the secret word, and for your chance to win a family four pack of tickets. Nice. And you get to go to a concert, nice. you get to go to the rodeo. It's a big deal. And if you go on to Tex it's KSAT Texas Eats on social media on okay. Instagram, I've made the account private. Ooh. But you go on there, and if you follow us on there, I'll add you on right now, and then you can see the first two letters in the giveaway. Cool. Oh, right? Hey. Nice. There so you KSAT go. Texas Eats on Instagram. I'll add you on right now. I got my phone right here, y'all. All right. We're ready to do oh, it. Yeah. We're ready to do and it. And you won't regret it. You'll no, you won't regret too. it. And you, you get a, like a head start to the I giveaway. will say, anyone that follows you on Instagram needs to know if they check it, Mouth watering. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's horrible. Yeah. I'll tell yeah. Steph every day. Yeah. I'm like, I checked his Instagram. Yeah. Elder Eats is like the crazy one that has like mm -hmm. all the wild food. Texas Eats focuses on the show. It shows like kind of like the teases and things. Okay. Elder Eats is the one though, man. That's yeah. it's just delicious. Can I it's ask just a lot you, of this. So you are a man who has going in tried many different <laughs> foods around San Antonio. Yes. Obviously, just about everything you try is so good, mm. but. Rodeo time, mm -hmm. what would you say are the main staples of food that mm. people need to try? Only the okay. hardest hitting questions on GMSA. I yes. know, I love it. It's, it's the good stuff. Drinks included. Yeah, so Ooh. I actually built a list of the yeah. best things that you should get when you're at the rodeo for $30. Oh. Okay, so it includes, you have to get a beer. 
Okay. Craft beer. And Wait, so like 30 total. 30 total. Okay. Yeah. $30 <laughs> each. I was like, what are you doing? Rodeo is getting rodeo. extreme. No. That's All right. Super so a craft beer is $10. Mm-hmm. All right. right. But you got to get yourself a beer. Okay. Impressed by this math. And then, yeah. Thank you. Chicken on a stick. Uh, All right. At classic. Chance Chicken on a Stick, it's $10. Comes okay. with a bed of rice. It's like an entree. Ooh. Okay. Okay. And then you get the deep fried peanut butter and jelly. Ooh. Oh, got some turkey. All right. That's $5. That's it. And it's this huge, like, ultimate peanut butter and jelly donut. Nice. And then for five more dollars, what? you can use this as an appetizer, a beef fajita taco. Oh my goodness. You can get all of that, and you like you just had like a, an entire meal. That's a, that's a whole day. That's, that's a, a whole day. Meal. <laughs> Maybe that's an elder meal, but that's, that's like, an elder that's meal, like, baby. Day. Let's check this each, man. To be honest, I have never had a turkey leg. I am from Texas, so I want to really? try Go for it. Shot. Get a tight shot. I want, it's her <laughs> first turkey leg. Okay, let's see. Here we go. Is it just like a big like drum You just leg? go for it. Woo! <laughs> Tastes like a turkey leg? Yeah. It's good. It is good. <laughs> it smells great. Oh yeah. These are smoked. These are delicious. Mm. You guys, it's yeah. it's all kinds of things at the rodeo this year. It's jumbo corn dogs. Ooh. Ooh. How big is a jumbo corn dog? It's like they deep fried a torpedo. I don't know what they're doing <laughs> out there. It's massive. And if you look at the hot dog before they even bread it, it's ridiculous. I was like, who will even makes this? Where is this made? Wow. Do you have a favorite at the uh, rodeo? Um, I mean, that's hard, right? I'm, try, I'm not trying to make you. My favorite make entree mad. would have to. Yeah, my favorite entree is definitely the uh, Chance Chicken on a Stick. I think oh. that is just a solid item. He wins Best Flavor at the mm. San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo continuously. He's won a lot of awards. I think it's just an overall. It's a. It's is a it dish. different than really like good. the Fiesta Chicken on a Stick? Very different. Okay. So uh, Chance, it's more of like a Chinese interpretation of what you can do. It's kind of like an Asian culture kind cool. of feel on vibe. So it's like a bourbon sweet sauce on the outside. So it's a little sweet. And then on the inside, nice and tender and juicy, and they're nice. cooking it on that open flame grill outside. Wow. Oh, y'all. Yeah. Right. And then the rice is made fresh right in front of you. He's just like, shh. I don't mean to cut you off because you're very enthusiastic, and I love it. Yes. <laughs> but our producer is yeah. telling us to wrap it up. Oh, we'll wrap it up, y'all. A lot of people jealous of your job yeah. right Texas now. Texas Eats, brand new, 10 o'clock, right after the news. Right here, y'all Woo-hoo. don't go anywhere. I'm don't so excited. Plates. I'm throwing plates. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Are you Honestly. not going to finish that? All right, anyway, 955, 51 degrees out. We'll be right back. Okay. Mm. And there's a lot to consider when taking on home improvement projects. Sometimes it can feel like a daunting task. Tomorrow on GMSA, Marilyn Moritz will discuss the importance of hiring licensed contractors. And a, and a look at the pollen count before you go. Um, ash is moderate at 130, mold is low at 80. Taking a look at temperatures, we are currently in the 50s. It's 51 degrees at San Antonio International Airport, 48. In Bulverde, 53 in New Braunfels and 51 at JBSA Randolph. For the rest of the day today, we'll start off cool here. Uh, temperatures will get up into the upper 50s by lunch hour, 65 and mild in the afternoon. A few peaks of sunshine, south winds at 5 to 10, not cooling down quite as quickly this evening. We'll only be at 52 tomorrow morning, 75 for the afternoon high tomorrow, and we'll be near 80 degrees for your Monday. But then a strong front arrives on Tuesday, and that'll send our temperatures tumbling into the 40s for highs Wednesday and Thursday with drizzle and light rain. So it's going to be the tale of two seasons, yes. guys. We have got spring-like weather this weekend, but chilly as we end next week. So we've got to go out prepared. to the rodeo today. Yeah. Oh, I, I haven't let go of this, by the way. No, you haven't. <laughs> I'm so excited. We have. We have. It was really heavy. <laughs> have a nice day, guys.